low level gang what is up welcome back <laughs> obviously arm processors can't float in that sense they do not physically float but arm processors in the mathematical sense and the computer science sense can float arm processors after the cortex m4 have a floating point unit in them or an fpu a specific part of the processor whose entire purpose is to do floating point math operations you can tell if your computer has one by checking out the tool chain to build for that ARM processor. If it has an HF in the compiler build chain in this third word here, that means that it has a hardware float unit or an FPU that is able to support doing vector operations as an entirely separate instruction set on the ARM Cortex processor. So what I've mocked up here in C is a harness to call a function calc float that we're going to write in assembly. Calc float will return a float value, we'll call that x here, and we're going to print out that float to prove that we've done some kind of math on the processor, right? So just to kind of walk this through, pound include standard io h to get libc linked in. We're going to declare our calc float function, but not actually define it. So we don't upset the compiler. And then we have you know, our int main prolog here, and then we have our function, and we're going to print out the return value of that function. So now we have our float.s, our assembly code will go into here. And then finally, once we're done with this, we're going to build our program with this tool chain. We're going to output the program name float, and we're going to bring in float.s, which is this assembly here, and our main.c. To make sure Kimu can actually run our program, you want to use tax static to statically compile that final binary so that Kimu can actually use it. So now what do we do? So main.c is going to be C code that gets compiled. This tool chain by default is going to produce thumb code. So first off, we need to make our code thumb to make sure that we don't have any issues with the code breaking. Next, we're going to write a function called calc float, right? Because that is the function expected by this C function here. We have to define this symbol. So to define a symbol, we want to be linkable. We have to export it. And to export a symbol in assembly, we say global calc float. We're also going to say that this is a function, and we're going to call the function calc float so that the prolog for the function gets set up properly in the assembler. And then finally, we need to make sure that the linker knows this is a thumb function. So we'll say dot thumb func. And then here, we can do a quick little test to make sure that our code actually compiles, builds, and doesn't crash by saying branch exchange LR. This is the ARM version of return. So if we get this to work, this just means that we have returned successfully from this function and gotten to the next line. So let's build it real quick and run it. Okay, cool. So our code runs, no crashes. We do return some garbage monster gigantic value, but that's okay, that's expected. We didn't actually do any math here, so it makes sense that nothing useful happened. So in our program here, I'm gonna show you guys how to do floating point math on the emulated FPU that we use in Kimu. What we're gonna do that math on is two separate floating point values, value one and value two. Value one is going to be a float, so we'll say dot float to set that up in the assembler. We'll make it 420. And then dot float here will make it 0.69. These numbers are completely random. Do not read into these at all. I just came up with these, no special reason. Okay, so now we need to actually use the instructions, the special instructions in the FPU to make the floating point math happen. Our first instruction we're gonna run is not sexy at all. We're gonna do a basic load register R0 equal to val1. All this is gonna do is load the address of val1 into R0. Next instruction will be our first special floating point instruction. The instruction is BLDR. This is vector load registers. Anything with a V in front of it is considered a vector instruction. And those are the instructions that are happening in the FPU. Floats are referred to as vectors in some mathematical implementations. So vector operations are floating point operations. So vector LDR S0, and we're gonna use this here. So what this does is this tells the floating point unit load into S0, which is the single point accuracy register zero. There are single point and double point, and you can you know, infer that the double point would be D0, but we're gonna do S0 for right now. Load into S0, the single floating point register, the address pointed to by R0. This is going to load 420 into this register on the FPU. And now we need to do this again for our second value, value two. And to do that, we can just copy this code here and change out S0 to S1 and value one to value two. Pretty straightforward. So by the time this code is RAM, you've gotten to line 12, the FPU has two registers loaded with addresses and values that we care about that we're gonna do math with. 
So now we can run a math operation in the FPU using an FPU math operation to do this floating point math, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the instruction to do the math. We can do V MUL, so vector multiply dot, this is a conditional operator onto the vector multiply operation. And we're gonna say do F32. So you have two options when doing floating point math in these processors. If you have double point accuracy, you can decide to do single or double point accuracy on the processor. To do single point, you do F32 for 32 bit float. Or if you wanted to do double point accuracy, you could do F64. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We'll do F32. And then after that, we encode it like a standard ARM instruction. We'll say the destination is S2 and we're gonna multiply S0 by S1. Cool, so once this instruction is ran, the S2 register will contain the output of S0 times S1. Awesome. And then, so again, remember, this is a function. The function needs to return a float. When a function returns a float in the ARM calling convention, it expects the register S0 to contain the response. So how do we get it set up properly? Well, at this point, the response is contained in S2. We need to change that. So normally we would do a move operation. We're in the FPU. So what instruction do you think we're going to do? We're going to do vector move, and we're going to move into S0, the value S2. So this is going to move the result into S0 and then return. This is our final code here. So again, we'll compile it real quick, GCC. There's one error there. We'll hit this enter key to make the assembler happy. Cool, no errors, and we'll run it. And there's our answer. Let's check Python to see if we're right. 420 times 0.69. Close enough. Low level gang, I hope you learned something there. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment with what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next low level video. Take care.